We all know hardware is really expensive right now. Even a year after launch, a PS5 is still hard to get. AMD still hasn't released a Ryzen 5 1600 or 2600 successor based on Zen 3. And entry-level GPUs cost more than their high-end counterparts did just a few years ago. But why is that? How can we explain this extreme shortage of chips? If you're looking for another video full of rants about scalpers and miners, then this isn't the right video for you. But if you actually want to understand how this chip shortage came to be and why it takes so long for supply and prices to go down back to normal again, then you should definitely stick around. This video is mostly based on an analysis by a German think tank. I'm putting the full 29 page brief down in the description below. So if you have the time and you're interested, then I highly recommend that you check it out. The full title of this paper is Understanding Global Chip Shortages. I really love academic titles because they're straight to the point, zero clickbait. And I really have to say, after reading the full analysis, I now understand why this chip shortage is happening. And I think after watching this video, so will you. In order to understand the origins of this chip shortage, you first have to get the basics of the semiconductor industry, specifically how the semiconductor industry supply chain works. The paper focuses on a couple of points that specifically classify companies within the semiconductor supply chain. Number one is a high division of labor. What that means is that instead of one or just a few companies building chips, there are literally dozens of different highly specialized companies working in the supply chain to make the chips happen. The process of creating a chip from start to finish is not a task a single company can manage. Nvidia, for example, just designs the chip. Then there are companies like TSMC or Samsung who manufacture them, but they are also relying on companies who produce the silicon wafer. There are companies who produce specialized chemicals. There are companies who are available in PCB manufacturing. There are companies who do the packaging. There are companies who specialize in specific electronic equipment to actually monitor those chips. And all of those companies have to work together to bring a product to life. It's literally dozens of highly specialized companies working together, and if even one of them fails, it has huge impacts on the whole supply chain. Often there's only a couple of companies in a specific niche, sometimes even only one or two. For example, if you take a look at ASML, if you want to buy high-end lithography systems, they're your only choice. No matter if you're Intel, TSMC or something, if ASML cannot deliver, you have to wait. In a nutshell, division of labor means that almost every single step is manufactured or produced or worked on by a different company. Two other important factors are high capital and knowledge intensity. What that means is that all of these companies work in areas that have a really high barrier of entry. For example, if your favorite Italian restaurant goes out of business, there's a high chance that another one will open up right away. But if you look at those companies, they need a lot of highly skilled workers. They need a lot of investments, really high R&D spending, really high costs for building new factories. That means if you want to enter that market, you have to spend a lot of money and a lot of time to be able, able to compete with the existing companies. As a result of these huge upfront costs in money, time and labor, if you have a supply shortage, that means that if there is a supply issue, other companies can just come in and help out because it would literally take years and billions of dollars to build up the extra capacity. And it gets even worse. Not only are there only a few companies per niche, but these companies intensify the issue by expanding partnerships. Let's take a look at AMD, for example. AMD has a really strong partnership with TSMC. They are building their GPUs and CPUs at TSMC's foundry and their R&D teams and design teams work closely together with TSMC. Sometimes these relationships go as far as some company may be designing a whole process node specifically for a customer. What that means is that AMD can just turn around and produce more chips at Samsung if they need the extra capacity because their designs are specifically optimized for TSMC's production nodes. And it would take a significant redesign to actually make them possible to produce them in Samsung's node, for example. On top of that, if engineers are working with specific TSMC production kits, they're not allowed to work on a Samsung production kit due to non-disclosure agreements. Another example would be foundries like TSMC need special chemistry to treat their wafers. And there are only a few companies in the world who produce these chemicals. But if you want to further 
optimize your process and have it at a bleeding edge of technology, you need to specialize those chemicals. So TSMC might get a special partnership with one of those companies and this company specifically builds the chemicals in order to best work with TSMC's process. But in return, TSMC now only has one supplier and if the supplier cannot deliver, they won't be able to quickly change to another supplier. To recap, there are a lot of different steps when it comes to creating semiconductors. And each of these steps only has a few specialized companies available. And this gets further intensified by special relationships between those companies. The next important point in understanding the supply shortage is that all these high costs and these specialized companies with specialized tools and special partnerships means that their production costs are so high, they basically have to run at near max capacity in order to make any money. TSMC, for example, needs to run their fabs at over 80% capacity to get a return on investment. The same is true for many companies working within the semiconductor space. They all need to produce their goods at a close to maximum level in order to actually make money off of it. That is a side effect of having such high costs for building factories and for R&D and for all the bleeding edge technology that you need to develop if you want to compete in this space. Now in the past, the semiconductor industry has always been on an up and down cycle, mostly coinciding with the current economy. So if the economy is booming, the semiconductor demand is growing. And if the economy is on a downturn, the semiconductor demand is slowing down. So in times of high demand, the factories are almost always at full capacity. And in times of lower demand, the factories should still be around 80% or the companies will have issues. Now, when COVID hit in early 2020, a lot of people thought it would lead to another economic recession. And to be honest, in the beginning, the stock markets did crash. But then basically the opposite happened to the semiconductor demand. A lot of people suddenly had to work from home. A lot of children stayed home and went to online school and people just spent more time at home in general. That meant that demand for electronics suddenly skyrocketed. Companies had to buy a lot of laptops for the employees, parents bought computers for their children. A lot of people started using specific tools like Zoom, which meant that those companies had to increase their server capacity. And because a lot of people spent more time at home, people bought more consoles and gaming PCs. But as you already know by now, there isn't a lot of headroom in the semiconductor supply chain. By quarter three of 2020, when first shortages became apparent, TSMC's utilization was already at 95%. And with the rigid supply chain, there wasn't a lot of room to grow. On top of that, local lockdown orders affected important companies within the supply chain, leading to actual supply issues within the semiconductor supply chain itself. What we are experiencing right now with the chip shortage is the simple combination of a rigid supply chain without a lot of headroom and suddenly increasing demand. Even without factory lockdowns or crypto mining, demand would have been much higher than supply. But the lockdowns and the rise of cryptocurrencies at the same time just added on top of it. And that's also the reason why it seems like GPUs are most affected of all electronics. We just talked about how the supply shortage became apparent in quarter 3 of 2020. That's about the same time cryptocurrencies like Ethereum started to go up in price heavily. And that just added on top of the existing pressure, especially when it came to GPUs. But then why did GPUs increase in price so much more than other components? I mean, low supply makes sense, but why the hefty increase in price with GPUs especially? That's because most people aren't willing to spend 2000 bucks on a PS5. It's a gaming console and while some people might drop a lot of money on it, most people want to buy it around MSRP or maybe spend 100 or 200 bucks on top max. But when it comes to GPUs and mining, you have to understand that for miners, a GPU is a tool to make money. So instead of buying a consumer product, it's basically a business expense. Miners can and will pay a lot more money for GPUs because they earn money with those GPUs. And if you're asking yourself right now how long it will take for supply to catch up to demand again, then I think you already know the answer. All those companies that produce the chips, they need their factories to run at at least 80% capacity and they want a higher number than that. If they would be building up a lot more capacity right now only for demand to drop later, they're losing money. As you can see, there's no real incentive for TSMC, Samsung or even Intel to greatly increase their capacity. Of course, they're building new fabs and we will see higher capacity in the future, but I don't think supply will ever reach the current demand. Their chip shortage will only end when demand comes down to meet current supply. 
unless there are major structural changes to the semiconductor supply chain, I think in the future we will still be only one small disaster away from another chip shortage. So far we just got lucky, and yes I'm saying that fully knowing that we are currently within a supply shortage, but up until this point most of the time we had ample supply of all the electronics was just a miracle with the way the supply chain is built up and how rigid it is and how little headroom there is. There is really no room for a crisis or disasters. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe for more content and see you next time.